Hi everyone, I'm Jake Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This is the Day. And Father Reed, we've got a lot to talk about. We do, and it's going to be a great show because Dr. Jack Calariso is back once again. President of Anna Maria College. He's going to be right here in the Catholic TV living room. And Jay, we're going to go off to Rome again to Castel San Angelo, a fascinating place. In fact, I was praying the rosary there just a little while ago. Absolutely. Kevin, what will we hear about in the news today? Jay, the Pope met with members of the International Space Station on the ground at Castel Gandolfo. Also, Archbishop Dolan is asking priests to focus public attention on poverty and unemployment. And we will have footage of a ceremony at the Vatican of the new program master of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre. All those stories had in the news, Jay. All that and much more right now on This is the Day. The day I'm joined by my great friends Kevin Nelson and Father Reed. How are you doing today? I'm in excellent configuration. I you really, look at, really can't complain. You look yeah. at it was well, a busy weekend. Oh well, we had yeah. first of all we had the permanent diaconate, which we uh, Catholic TV covered, which was at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, and a Deacon, great day. Great day, and and Deacon Tim uh, Marr was in this morning and was the deacon uh, at the TV mass. Putting him right, Bob Blaine. putting him right to putting him right to work. Yeah, it was great, though. That's a great opportunity of men. The, they like, were all married men, all yeah. 13 of them. Oh, really? Yeah. And people don't realize, we said this on the last program, how difficult that program is in terms of the wives have to be involved, too. Sure. And it's a great commitment. Um, so good for them, 13 guys. That's yeah. wonderful. Big congratulations. Wonderful. Yeah. We also, uh, I attended something that you happen to be honored at. The Cadero Award. The Cadero Award. Daughters well, of St. Paul. you got to give the Daughters of St. Paul daughters a Saint lot Paul. of credit. I mean, talking, you know, we... We're obviously into media here at the Catholic TV Network, uh, but they, in such a varied way and for so many years, inspired by Mother Cordero, mm -hmm. after whom the award is named. And uh, I was very honored, we were very honored that they would recognize Catholic TV in that award. So thanks to the Daughters of St. Paul for all the great work that they do. And a special thank you to them also, because not only did you receive the award at a tea, and I had tea, I don't drink tea, but I had tea and then I liked it, and it was great, just great. Good food. They were there earlier in the morning for the Sunday Mass, yeah. where our great friend, Monsignor Daly, celebrated. So they got up early, and then we had a good friend of yours, I know, because yeah. you are sure. both alumnus of the North Amer the Pontifical, Pontifical <laughs> North American <laughs> College in Rome. I celebrated the Mass, did a great job. But you yeah. know what's great about that? What? Some very hap uh, funny happened during that Mass. Oh, so I, I don't know say. if anyone... Charles, do you watch Sunday Mass? This, you, you, missed it you missed it, okay. Too bad. Well, what happened was we had all of the daughters, and they all had their blue habits on. So they're all there in the congregation. And then there's this little blonde who is 12 years old, who is right in the middle of all the daughters, <laughs> which was Amelia, my, my daughter. Amelia. And you know what I call her now? What do you call her? I call her Sister Mary Amelia. I made her a novice. Well, we had a She's picture, a and it might be on the Cardinal's blog at some point. Yeah. There's a picture with all of the sisters, Monsignor Dealey, and right by his side, about this high, is Amelia. You know what I'm going to do what? so that people can see it? I'm going to put it up on Facebook uh, right after the show. Go to... Uh, Facebook.com slash Catholic TV uh, in just a little while, and you'll see that picture along it's with great, some others. It's a great, great picture. And then this Thursday, to continue all these things going on, there is a wonderful event in the Archdiocese of Boston, and mm -hmm. they might do this in other dioceses, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it's the Priest Appreciation Dinner. And I have been this to the pa in the past. You're the MC. What mm -hmm. are you? You get around, huh? Yeah, a little bit. And, um, Lately. and I have to tell you, though, what a great opportunity to say thank you to so many priests. Yeah, it's a real celebration of priesthood, and uh, as Jay says, I'm sure it goes on in other dioceses too, uh, but just a way for people throughout the archdiocese, and it's a huge event, you know, thousands of people come, and just to, to pay tribute, 
and it's a fundraiser to to assist uh, the uh, the the um, the fund that uh, helps the retired priests and and the priests who are sick. So uh, it's a great event Thursday night, and uh, we're all looking forward to it. Well, actually, you'll be there one day. One day you will be a retired priest. So we'll help you out. Well, I live right next to Regina Cleary, the retirement house. So yeah. you know, I can just kind of roll myself over. Well, one and of our happens. good friends actually was at that tea, was uh, Monsignor Tierney. Oh, Monsignor Tierney. Who was a retired priest. What a guy. He's a great guy, and there are so many priests. I I'm sure you're one of those people out there, you know, you go to church all the time, and there's been priests who have been an important part of your life. And I think it's important for us to have the opportunity to say thank you. And this, this is one of those ways. Now, obviously, a lot of you can't go to this dinner, which is packed, by the way. Over 1,000 people go to it. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways you can do it. You can say thank you after Mass. You know, there's obviously, uh, you know, time, many times when you can thank a priest. I know mm -hmm. that for me personally, I try to say thank you after Mass. So, hey, nice job, Father, you know. So, I was talking to uh, Dr. J Jack Calariso, our guest today from Anna Maria College, right before the uh, show, because he sometimes goes to the parish where I celebrate Mass oftentimes on the weekend, St. Bonaventure's in Plymouth. That's where the pilgrims landed, you know. And that parish is an example of a parish where people are always expressing their gratitude. That's they right. always say, Father, thanks for Mass, nice homily, or Makes whatever. Makes a difference for you, too, doesn't or it? Or lousy homily, good Mass, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Makes a difference, though, doesn't it? It does. Feels good. Yeah, it does. Well, one of the things we like to do is travel to Rome here at Catholic Love TV. Love Rome. While we sit right here in our living room. My mother loves it, too. She was here yesterday, and one of them came on. She said, I love that. I love to watch those. The it's Casual Roma. Roma. And as you said, this one is interesting because if you were watching earlier and you watched the rosary, we were right on the bridge mm -hmm. right here. So people will understand it a little better. And after we go to Castel San Angelo in just a moment, I want to tell you a funny story about when we recorded that rosary. But for now, let's take a Viaggio a Roma to the Castel San Angelo, a fascinating place. <music> Back to Rome, I'm Father Reed. Ciao, amici. You know, Castel San Angelo, this imposing building right here on the Tiber River on its banks, has quite the crazy history. Here's what I mean. The building you see behind me was first a mausoleum, then it became part of a city wall, and later turned into a fortress before it functioned as the residence for popes, and finally, as a barracks and a military prison. Today, and for good reason, it's a national museum. The Castel San Angelo was originally built by the Emperor Hadrian as a mausoleum and was finished in 139 AD during the reign of Hadrian's successor, Antoninus Pius. The mausoleum, you see, was connected to the city at the other side of the river by a newly constructed bridge which then was called the Pons Alias. The bridge now, today, is known as the Ponte San Angelo, and I'm standing right on it. It's lined by statues depicting angels who are holding elements of the Passion of Christ. These were added during the Renaissance. Now, between 270 and 275 AD, during the construction of the Aurelian Walls, Hadrian's mausoleum was fortified and it was incorporated into the Aurelian Wall around Rome. And so from that point on, the building slowly turned into a fortress. And in 1277, it was acquired by the Pope, who used the building as a refuge in case of danger. You see, there's a passageway that runs through the wall, a secret corridor inside the wall known as the Passato di Borgo, connects the Castel San Angelo with the Vatican. The corridor was used by Pope Clement VII and his Swiss guards so that they could take refuge during the sack of Rome in 1527. The papal apartments inside of the Castel San Angelo feature beautiful rooms, as you can imagine, decorated with many frescoes. Below the apartments are several floors of prisons and even, even a torture chamber. A spiraling corridor, part of the original mausoleum, leads to the bottom of the building. Now, at the top of the fortress, looking over the River Tiber and the city of Rome, is a statue in bronze 
which was replaced by an earlier marble version. The statue depicts an angel who, according to legend, appeared at the top of the fortress in the year 590 and miraculously ended a severe plague that had infested the entire city of Rome. After that event, the building was renamed Castel San Angelo, the Holy Angel Castle. So like I said, quite a crazy history for this burial place, turned into fortress, turned into papal residence, turned into prison, and today a fascinating museum for you to visit if you're ever in the city. From Castel San Angelo, ciao amici, ci vediamo presto. Well, the, uh, uh, you've got me uh, intrigued now. I want to hear this story. Well, you'll remember it because we were standing on that bridge not far from where I was standing uh, as, as you saw me in that Viaggio a Roma, and we were recording Rosary, the Sorrowful Mysteries, most appropriately, and there was a group of like junior high school age mm, kids. I remember And now. they were there, and they were saying some things. Some of them were inappropriate, in Italian, by the way, and in English. And I was hearing all this, and at the same time, I was saying the rosary. So it was kind of hard to get through. But well, it was you funny. know what the beauty of it was? I remember that because I turned to the teacher at one point and I said, "Stop." And uh, the the thing is, you never heard it on your mic, though. No. But you could certainly hear it. But we checked, and you couldn't hear it on your mic, which was a very good thing. It was it was a tough moment. But people don't realize when we do shoots like that, when we're out on the field like that, you never know what's going to happen. Like we had that, we're doing something else, and and they were doing interviews behind us, and you have people. Sometimes you're taping, and people walk right in front of the camera. Mm. Literally, there is maybe two feet, and they will walk. They can go to ten feet behind the camera, but no, they walk the one. They're two just feet not paying attention. So it always, always happens. So eventually, we had to put two people on either side of the camera too, mm. so people wouldn't walk through. Thank God that Kevin always pays attention. Kevin always does. Kevin, how are you doing today? Good, Jay. Father Reed, how you how's doing? School, how's school going for the kids? They've, you know, they've been a couple of weeks now. Yeah, they're doing, love it. Love Back it. into love the routine. Really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, every day I ask, how's, yeah, great, love it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't ask for more. Kevin, yeah. what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? All right, thanks, Jay and Father. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. Pope Benedict XVI welcomed nine crew members from the International Space Station and the Space Shuttle Endeavour to the Papal Villa in Castel Gandolfo. The astronauts had spoken with the Pope May 21st during a video hookup with the space station. Now the astronauts, two of whom are Italian, are on a speaking tour of Italy. And during their visit with the Pope, the astronauts gave him back a silver medallion, which he had given them to carry to the space station. The medallion has a depiction of the creation of man from Michelangelo's famous fresco in the Sistine Chapel. Roberto Vittori, an Italian member of the Endeavour team, had let the medallion float weightless in front of the screen for the Pope to see. The astronauts also gave the Pope an atlas of the universe and a framed memento to hang on the wall containing a Vatican flag, the NASA logo, and a photograph of the space shuttle. In other news from the Vatican, in a ceremony at the Vatican headquarters, officials of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem welcomed U.S. Archbishop Edwin O'Brien as their new pro grand master. Catholic News Service's Carol Glatz has more on the informal ceremony and what Archbishop O'Brien hopes to accomplish in his new post. Officials at the Vatican headquarters of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem welcomed U.S. Archbishop Edwin O'Brien as their new pro grand master. Archbishop Giuseppe De Andrea, the order's assessor, placed a gold chain and pendant around Archbishop O'Brien's neck and told him his new role is like a chain that ties him to the Holy Land. Archbishop O'Brien thanked everyone present at the informal ceremony, including the order's honorary assessor, Cardinal Andrea Cordero Lanza di Montezemolo. The new program master told CNS what he would like to accomplish. Peace is the word. Uh, we, we look to forward the cause of peace in the Holy Land. That's, that's the Holy Father's burning desire, uh, to stop the exodus of Christians, to make more available the holy places to more people, and to encourage pilgrimage to the Holy Land. It's, it's a singular, unique part of, of the world where Christ walked and taught and performed his miracles and rose from the dead. Christ is risen. The 900-year-old knightly order is dedicated to supporting the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem and to respond to the needs of Catholics in the Holy Land by funding seminaries, schools, social centers, and hospitals. 
Archbishop O'Brien succeeds Cardinal John Foley, who retired early for reasons of health. The Archbishop said he will bring with him his many years of experience. Uh, I've traveled a lot the world for 10 years with our American Armed Forces. I know most of the bishops pretty well in the United States, and more than half or about half of our membership is in North America. And I think it's very important to continue the great work that Cardinal Foley has done. I'm, I'm so grateful for, uh, for his past efforts and his present encouragement. I hope, uh, if not to fill his shoes, to follow in his footsteps. Looking now at news from around the country, the president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops is urging priests across the country to preach about how the economy is negatively affecting families and communities. Archbishop Timothy Dolan of New York wrote the letter to his fellow bishops at the recommendation of the Administrative Committee, which directs the work of the USCCB between General Assemblies. The Archbishop said he wanted priests to use their positions as pastors, teachers, and leaders to focus public attention on poverty and jobless in society. He noted that special resources and materials to assist in that effort would be posted in an Unemployment and Poverty section of the USCCB website at www.usccb.org. The Archbishop also noted that the U.S. Census Bureau had recently released statistics showing that 46 million people, including 16 million children, were living in poverty in the United States in 2010. He said unemployment and poverty are diminishing human life, undermining human dignity, and hurting children and families. And finally in the news, it has been announced that Pope Benedict XVI has accepted the resignation of Bishop John McCormick of Manchester, New Hampshire, and appointed Auxiliary Bishop Peter Levesky of Rockville Center, New York, as his successor. Bishop McCormick, who has headed the Diocese of Manchester since 1998, is 76 years old. Bishops are required by canon law to turn in their resignation when they turn 75. Bishop McCormick is a native of Winthrop, Massachusetts, and was ordained a priest of the Boston Archdiocese in 1960. He was appointed a Boston Auxiliary Bishop in 1995. Bishop Lebeski is from the New York borough of Queens. He's by ritual, meaning he is permitted to celebrate the Latin Rite Mass and the Divine Liturgy of the Byzantine Ruthenian Catholic Church. He was ordained a priest of the Rockville Center Diocese in 1978, was appointed an auxiliary bishop in the diocese in 2007. He'll be installed as Manchester's new bishop December 8th at St. Joseph's Cathedral. And that is all the information we have for this Tuesday, September 20th, 2011. Send it back over to Father Jay Moore. This is the day. Kevin, thank you very much. We'll see you a little later on in the program. Thanks, and Kevin. Joining us now is Dr. Jack Calariso, president of Anna Maria College. Jack, thanks so much for being with us oh, again. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for inviting oh, yeah. me. We're thrilled that you're with us, and it's, uh, it's not a bad ride for you to get down here. No, it's easy. Yeah, we've, we've had longer rides. You just get in the left lane and go with the flow. <laughs> hey, tell us about the ways Anna Maria stays true to its mission, because it really does, and that's so important. Well, you know, for us, mission is the, is the most important thing. If not a Catholic institution, then why would we be there? There are lots of small private colleges in New England. So we really take it very seriously. We're the only Sisters of St. Anne College um, that exists. And so we spend a good deal of time trying to understand um, what it means to be a Catholic institution and making sure that our students, our faculty, and staff understand it. So we celebrate it you know, through kind of the normal things you'd expect, through liturgy, through prayer, through special events. But we also teach our students uh, about what it means. And uh, we try to bring the sisters, you know, like most small schools sponsored by religious congregations, we have very few sisters left at the institution. We bring sisters. As a matter of fact, last Friday, we uh, were in the midst of our 65th anniversary celebration, and we brought all the sisters who were able, who've ever attended Anna Maria, worked at Anna Maria, been a part of the community back for a birthday party. Oh, nice. And we had the sisters and students, and we put them together and let them tell stories. And you know what they found out? Things haven't changed much in 65 years. <laughs> and so it was a great experience. So we, we celebrated every day. Mm -hmm. Now, Anna, Mar Anna Maria recently received recognition for community service. I know that. Can you tell us about that? And what, what was it that received such great recognition? Right. Well, um, every year um, there's a national a recognition program where colleges are picked across the country to receive this this honor and it's really a reflection of your your day in and day out work in terms of service so for us um, it has a lot to do with the programs that we do through our campus ministry program um, but through our student affairs office as well I'll give you one example because it happened last week last week was the United Way Day of Caring and it happens all over the country and in central Massachusetts there were about 
uh, 1,100, 1,200 volunteers. Anna Maria College had over 300 of those volunteers. We were the largest um, contributor to that day. And this is the fourth year in a row we've done that. As a matter of fact, they've uh, instituted an award in central Massachusetts, and we were the first recipients. Our students understand that um, it's more about education. It's what do you do with that education? What do you do with that knowledge? How do you go out into the world and serve? And so this recognition was really the way that, that Anna Maria was, was applauded for its, nice. um, its continuous efforts in the area of service. Mm -hmm. When you talk about service, let's get into that a little bit more because you have such a great tr tradition of doing that. Share some of, of the ways that Anna Maria lives this out. What are some of the other things you do? Sure. Well, we, have, um, you know, we have groups that, that do regular things every year. We have a group that does um, you know, Habitat for, for Humanity. Mm -hmm. We call them the Habitats, <laughs> and they go out every year and they work on a project. Uh, we have students who are involved in alternative spring break. We actually have a group now that, that goes out and does service between fall and spring break, and they'll pick service projects in, in not just the Worcester area, but really throughout New England, and they'll go out and do projects. We have students who are involved in tutoring programs. Um, they work in uh, a program in the Worcester Public Schools where they help students. So um, we're involved. We probably have... Um, um, more than half of our students are involved in um, every day, every week service programs. An area that's really big for us is um, we expect our student athletes to be involved in service. Mm -hmm. and they do it as a team. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon to see the buses pull up and our football team or our you know, basketball teams get on a bus and go off and do a service project, whether it's cleaning up a park or uh, working with young people in an after-school program. They just understand that that's a way of life. Mm -hmm. Formation. It's all about formation of Absolutely. the total. Absolutely. That's what I love about Anne Maria. It's about formation of the total person. It's not just education. It's forming a person. But we think that, you know, citizenship is an important part of your life. We want our graduates to be great professionals, to go out and do wonderful things in whatever their field is. But we want them to be good contributing members of society, be active in their church, mm -hmm. be active in their community. If they're not Catholic, you know, get involved in their church, their faith tradition. If they are, we want them to be leaders. And we think service is a big part of that. So we think, you know, leadership training, um, formation of character, um, having the kind of uh, values that will serve them the rest of their life is uh, pretty important. Mm -hmm. And campus ministry is important, too. I understand you have an excellent campus minister. Well, she had problems as a young child, I understand. <laughs> you can probably tell us about that. Maria Barry, who was the lector at Mass this morning, if yes. you're watching on Catholic TV, she's a wonderful person. I knew her when she was just in grammar school. That's right. Yeah. No, we're all kidding aside. Great campus ministry program. We have a great team. Maria directs our program. We also have a full-time chaplain, Father Manny Clavillo, who's from Columbia and a priest of the Worcester Diocese. We actually have a permanent deacon who's assigned to, uh, to Anna Maria, and then we have a visiting priest who helps us. And they do, you know, an array of programs, just like at any Catholic college, but uh, what's great about this team is they can relate to all kinds of students. Mm -hmm. So students have the opportunity to get involved in different kinds of programs. They can get involved in liturgical programs, prayer programs, scripture study, or service programs. Mm -hmm. Where can people learn more about Anna Maria? Well, the best place these days is always on the website. So www.annamaria.edu is, is, is the easiest way. But come out and visit us. You know, it's not that far, and, and the road goes both ways. So <laughs> you can come out of Boston and come up to just north of Worcester. And it's a very pastoral setting, too. It is, it? it is. You know, we're 192 acres. Um, it's really park-like setting. And we'd love to have people come and visit and take a tour of the campus or come out and participate in our programs. Um, it's an open campus. Or maybe go to a football game, because I'm going to tell you something. And this is to you football players <laughs> and Anna Marie right now. I am telling you I've got a great feeling about this week. I yeah, like that. I've got a good, good feeling, and I want to hear about it when they get the Absolutely. W this they're week. Absolutely. Playing, uh, they're playing this Saturday up in Castleton State, up mm -hmm. in the northern part of Vermont, and, and um, I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm going to go back and make sure, just in case they're not watching this morning, to go back and tell them that you predicted victory. I did. Hey, Jack, thanks so much for being with us. Keep up the great work. And you stay with us. Kevin's coming back out here. We've got a little more of This Is The Day to share with you. We'll be right back. Thank great you. Job. Thank you. When I found out I was pregnant, I thought I would lose my job. My boyfriend told me to choose between him and the baby. I worried about staying in school. I was already struggling to care for one child. My parents told me I wasn't ready to be a mom, so I had an abortion. 
I had physical problems afterwards. I went from relationship to relationship. I hated myself. I started to have nightmares. I cried when I saw a pregnant woman. I tried to commit suicide. Couldn't bond with the child I later had. I tried to numb my pain with alcohol. I struggled with depression. I had trouble conceiving again. You see, abortion didn't solve our problems. It just created different ones. Each of us thought we were the only ones struggling afterward. Now we realize many women regret their choice. That's why we are silent no more. We found help and healing, and you can too. Call or go online today. Anna Maria, 1700 students doing a great job up there teaching leaders in the Catholic faith. So it's always wonderful to hear what they're up to. It's always uh, wonderful to hear what Kevin Nelson's up to because we have a telethon coming up in less than two weeks. Is it that quick? It is <laughs> that quick. Yeah. You, you were nervous? here late last night. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We, we're gearing up, we'll, uh, getting things together. Actually, we just had uh, uh, Jesse Manabusin come in yesterday, uh, did some uh, music for That's the telethon. Big name. Yeah, yeah, a lot it of gets people around. A lot of people know his uh, first song that he ever did was "Open My Eyes," mm -hmm. uh, but he does, he's done a lot of great music, and he's working with a few other people writing some new music. So he came in, did some songs, and uh, we got a lot of great entertainment. Got a lot of people stopping by for interviews. And you have a good feeling. We, we encourage you. Yeah, feeling feeling great. We're gonna beat last year's <laughs> total, even in this tough economy. That's right. Yeah, hopefully people will tune in. Uh, you know, we're going to try and, and make it entertaining, but we also try to show uh, showcase all the work that we're doing here at Catholic TV. Um, so we're going to show you some great programs. We have a lot of great new shows this season, so this is a great way to highlight that, too, and, and showcase some of the things we're working on. So. Well, that's great. You know, right beside me, though, one of the funny things that happened at the, uh, actually, at the tea yesterday with the daughters was Father Reed took out his iPad. Now he has it out again. <laughs> and if you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can get the app. It's free. It's called iCatholic, and you can read our magazine. This is the September edition. It's all about our new programming and the telethon on page 10. Or you can go to catholictv.com and just click on magazine, and you can read it right there. It's all for you. Yeah, and there's a lot in there. Well, what's funny about it was Father Avani was there. Father Avani came up, and he had... Uh, all of his notes on an iPhone, I think, Father, was it an iPhone? It was an iPhone. On an mm -hmm. iPhone, so Father Reed came up and did him one better because he brought his iPad oh, up. Uh, so he had some notes on it. It was the iPad. battle of the eyes. It was the battle of the <laughs> eyes. It was media day. <laughs> it was media day. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'd especially like to thank Jack for telling us about Anne Maria College and the wonderful work that they are doing in educating students up there, continuing the faith. And know that all of you, in our thoughts and in our prayers. And you truly are in our thoughts and most especially in our prayers, particularly those who have sent in intentions which we keep in the prayer box. And we ask God's blessing and strength as well upon the students and faculty and administration of Anna Maria College and all of you who are our faithful viewers. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Catholic TV living room. We love coming into yours. Until next time, everyone, God bless and have a great day and a great night. Just a great